How do you know when you're finished meditating? Can you offer suggestions to us so that we can know when we're finished meditating? Yes, I can offer suggestions. I don't know if they'll do you any good, but I can offer suggestions. The first suggestion is you can set a timer that goes ding at the end of the amount of time that you've said that you want to meditate. Then when that timer goes ding, if you feel the need to jump up and get out of there, then you have a choice. You can do that or you cannot do that depending on your goal. If your goal is to do what false personality doesn't like, then do what false personality doesn't like. Well, why would anyone do that? In order to struggle against false personality and its overpowering mechanical habits in our lives that make us the machines that we are. But I find that when I struggle with false personality, I get tense, okay? Then relax. But I find it so difficult to relax, okay? then practice relaxing. Well, how do I do that? Okay, here's how you do that. Breathe. Breathe? Yes. Suck air into your lungs through your nostrils. Let it go down into your abdomen. Let it push your abdomen out. Hold it, not tight, just in a relaxed way. Hold it for a few moments, as long as it's comfortable and then slowly let it out through your nostrils. Do that several times. When you inhale, just think, relax, accept. When you exhale, just think, release, just release, let go. That's a way to relax more. If you'll practice that, if you'll do that, you will find that it will work. There's something about coordinating our breath with our mind and our motions that helps the machine bring three centers together. And when those three centers come together in harmony, they begin to work together. We find that just for a moment, in just in a little way, we are more one than we usually are. We're focused on a goal, and it has a tendency to draw our force together, draw our energy together, and help it to move easily. Really, that's all we want to do. All we want to do is have our centers work together properly. All we want to do is balance everything so that we are what we're supposed to be. Well, what is that? Well, right now, it's a, it's a broken machine. So what we want to do now is we want to try and mend whatever part of the machine that we are able to become aware of and work on. And mending in this case means cleansing. We really need to clean the machine first in order to know what we've got. What we've actually got when we start to look is a dirty machine. And as we look at this dirty machine, we think, well, I can't even make, I can't find where the screws are. What's a Phillips head screw and a slotted head screw? What are these new star screws? Well, I can't tell what's what. There's so much dirt in there. Okay, we'll start to clean it out. Well, how do you do that? You do that by shedding light on it. And then there's some things that as you shed light on it, you'll realize that you're going to have to breathe through it. The breath kind of washes things away, has a tendency to wash away impurities. And your mind helps to wash away the impurities because if you can let the thoughts go with your breath, if you can just let them go with your breath. If you can let the feelings just go with your breath, just release. Inhale, and then release. Just let it go. Just let your thoughts go. Let your feelings go. Let it all go. Let the tension drop away. If you can do that, and you can do that, if you will remember that and practice that, you will find that you start to harmonize the machine. You start to bring the machine into balance. You start to cleanse it. You start to purify it. See, when you exhale, you are purifying your body. You are getting rid of toxins. You know that the breath that you exhale is not breathable. It's not like, oh, that's good air. Give me some of that. You know, it's like, and I'm not saying your breath is bad. What I'm saying is you're getting rid of wastes. You're getting rid of the body's wastes. And when you inhale, you're feeding the body. It's a genuine, real food. And this is what this work teaches, that air is food at a certain level, and that water is food, and that solid food is food, and that impressions, thoughts and impressions that you come in, that come in through the senses, are also food. So it's a matter of eating right, and it's a matter of eliminating what you don't need. And the problem with us is we haven't eliminated what we don't need. We're stuffed up constipated mentally, emotionally, physically. Our muscles are full of all kinds of lactic acids and tension. 
Our lungs, because we don't breathe properly in our lungs, are full of all kinds of toxins because we just use the top part of our lungs. We don't really reach down and use all of our lungs. So there's a lot of junk in there that just needs to be allowed to get out. Just that in and of itself will help to purify the machine. You have better blood, better oxygenated blood. The cells will be able to eat better. What is coming in and what is moving, it's like a stream. If you close a stream off, it doesn't take long for the edges to start to get stagnant and nasty. Now, in the middle, it may still be moving okay, but you close it off completely, and it's just a matter of time until you've got a mosquito pit that really stinks and turns nasty. But if you open that up again, no matter how nasty it is, if you open that up again and you let fresh, clean, pure water start to flow in there again, it will heal itself. That's the way we are. We will heal ourselves if we will allow the machine to work properly. And the way to allow the machine to work properly is to know your machine. And the way to know your machine is to observe your machine. Turn the lights on and look at it. We'll see, when we turn the lights on, we go, Oh, God, what a mess! And then we turn the lights off again. And we run away screaming, like our hair is on fire. And then we pretend that that's not, that was, then we forget about that. That's not my machine. Oh, no, no, no. And then we make up an idea of a machine that we would rather, you know, then we get in the Ferrari or whatever. You know, we make up some other idea about what our machine is really like. But no, you have to bravely go where you have not gone before, within, and look at what is actually there, without criticizing it, without judging it, without condemning it. Now, we have no tools to do that, and this work gives us the tools. And the reason we have no tools to do that is because we never knew anybody who did that. When you grew up, everybody was very ready to tell you what you did wrong. People marked your test, and they marked in red in school what you did wrong. Mark, mark, mark. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. But what if somebody had come along and said, oh, wow, look at this. Look, you, look at how many you got right. Look at all these. And they had a big gold pen. And every time you got a question, you answered a question right, they put a big gold mark there. Said, look at this. You're really doing wow. great. You see, do you, do you understand? It's like, this is the way we were Raise. This is what we've acquired. Red marks for all the bad things you've done. Where are the gold marks for all the good things you've got, done? What I'm saying is, look, you can do this. This is not hard. It's just you've got to be consistent. If you want this to work, you've got to be consistent. And you've got to understand that you've got a lot pulling you down. Our acquired personality is pulling us down. It's a very heavy, leaden-like thing. And it just pulls us down. It won't let us float. It won't let us feel airy, light. See, and, and that's really what enlightenment is. It's not just light. It's also light, like not heavy. Enlightenment's not heavy. People laugh when they get enlightened. <laughs> they laugh a lot when they get enlightened because they have the joy of like being like a child. It's like, Everything is wondrous. Everything is crisp. Everything is clean. Everything is pure. Everything is beautiful. And everything is great. And when it's not great, it's like, well, isn't this great that it's not great? Now, I know that that sounds insane, but that's only because we are. The reason things sound insane to us is because we are. The reason the truth sounds crazy to us is because we are. We are not the truth. We are crazy. That's why things sound insane to us, because they have to get through our heads. And our heads are scrambled. They're not right. They're all wired wrong because we can't see the beauty all around us. It's not because there's not beauty all around us. It's because we're wired incorrectly because what we acquired from all these people telling us this is wrong, that's wrong, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you're never going to get it, and blah, 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 blah. What was the question? So how I know when I'm done is I say so. If I have met my requirements, I have meditated for the amount of time that I said I wanted to meditate, I then have struggled with the false personality. It wants to jump up and run away. And I say, no, you just wait. You'll be fine. You don't have to do anything. There's no fire. I know I left enough time so that I could sit here for five or ten minutes and not have to go and do anything and be anywhere. And then breathe, relax, let things go, and you will feel a sense of balance and peace. When you feel that sense of balance and peace, take it out into life. If it takes you 30 seconds, it took you 30 seconds. If, you're, if when the bell goes ding, you feel it then, then fine, take it then. That's how you know. If you feel it before and the bell hasn't gone ding, you haven't met your requirement that you set for yourself. 
and you need to meet your requirement that you set for yourself because that's what this is about. It's about setting aims, goals, and reaching them. <laughs>